we have a Kickstarter going, and I would say the Kickstarter is going pretty well. It is the Abstract Strategy Games new collection started by Canary Abstract. And I've been honored to be included among the very first four designers to get the support of Canary. Uh, he has put a lot of effort into making these games into kind of physical products. And uh, hopefully people out there with families and uh, who are into board games, or, and it's definitely people who are into abstracts, uh, take a look at these at this series. So trike here in the upper left, slide in the upper right, make muster in the lower right, and hexentafel in the lower left. So we have different types of games on different types of boards. Right now, our uh, our goal is around. This is in Swedish kroner, but because I'm in Sweden right now, but uh, it's around nine thousand dollars and we have most of the way there basically almost uh, seven thousand dollars have been backed um, and that's from 93 different backers which honestly i'm very uh surprised and uh, grateful that so many people decided to back the project here is the story of this kickstarter so Canary is an independent game publisher, and he's been producing and selling these fabric style games on demand for several years. And uh, he actually published Meridians, which had an extremely successful Kickstarter uh, a few years ago. In order to publish games from the outside designers, uh, Canary has decided to take the plunge and partner with a production company to embark on this mass produced cardboard style. So here's, here's what the games look like. Uh, nice elegant game boxes and you can see here the uh, each individual one contains uh, the, the board the boxes the components and a, a slick little rules sheet these games are all very simple so the rules sheets are all pretty tiny let's say the presentation of the games uh, game boxes uh, up front and the idea here is that if this Kickstarter works then Canary is going to publish more abstracts. So if you like abstracts, or you care about abstracts um, at all, uh, you might under you might know already that not very many uh, abstract game publishers really get off of the ground. And so what Canary is doing is uh, pretty courageous, and I really hope that um, that he succeeds. Right. So here is my game and this is trike and we have the little logo of the guy falling into the trap and that's because this game is all about setting traps and it's also set in the uh in the egyptian pyramids basically you've got this the soul of a of some mortal running through the hallways of this pyramid full of traps the forces of 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 blue magic and white magic are trying to trap the soul in in their sphere of, of influence so this game has actually very few rules uh, in trike uh, there's no cycles because of the, the way that the board fills up gradually throughout play so eventually there must be an end but there's no draws because there's no tie scores because of the way the board is shaped uh, and I, I'll explain why in a little bit so basically uh, the two players keep moving these pawns in a straight line, placing discs of their own color at the destination. And then when the pawn gets trapped, whoever has more pieces around the pawn wins. And the reason why it's drawless is because of the way the board is shaped, because depending on where you end up, there's only like a few options. So if you end up in the corner, there's three points available. If you end up on the side, there's five points available. And if you end up in the middle, there's seven points available. So Overall, no matter what you do, there's going to be somebody who controls the pawn uh, a little bit more. Let me just show you a quick playthrough to you'll kind of immediately grasp how it's played. So you're going to place a piece, and um, right now this implementation does not include this, uh, say, the pawn. And the pawn is essentially a last move indicator. How you move the pawn is you basically can move uh, along these straight lines. Uh, as long as you want without running into something in a straight line so you can't jump on to or jump over occupied points when you move the pawn first you place your piece onto the square and then you move a pawn on top of that so the, the, the computer opponent is moving kind of fast and I'll just show you a quick way to lose the game here I, I played here and then he played here and we did the scoring and since black 
uh, had two pieces next to the pawn. This is the pawn, this is the last move played. And uh, I only had one, so black wins. So let's try again, and I'll, this time I can beat the computer. Well, let's hope, anyway. All right, he swapped. And that's the other thing, is in the beginning there's no pawn, you just place the pawn anywhere and you put your piece underneath it. And the opponent gets to choose, all right, should I, uh, should I, should I play from this position or, or uh, steal the first move? So this is called the pie roll. So now I'm just gonna move into that trap. I'm gonna create a trap of my own here. Okay, he stole my trap, or like kind of ruined it. That's fine, that's fine. And now they have a trap, so I'll ruin it by playing inside there. And now I'll try to create my own trap, another one. And they ignored it, so now I have a, a working trap, which is pretty cool. I'll create another one by placing here. All right, they played inside of it. I'll create another one by playing here. And they ruined it, so I'll play a kind of, let's say, influential move by adding influence to all this area. And now, by playing here, he allowed me to, let's say, have a trap here in this location. What this means is, if the pawn ends up in this final position, then I'm gonna win, because I have three to whites two. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, but I'm playing as black. So now I'm gonna set up a interesting little situation here. If, oh shit, is he winning now? No, I think I'm winning. What are you talking about? Oh my god. Oh my god. And I lost to the computer. But anyway, and the reason why I lost is because when I play here, I'll play a black piece, and it'll be my three to the on the pawn, whereas white will have four surrounding the pawn, which is the last move. Yeah, so what happens in this game? If you can see, I'll just start over it, another game. You can see basically that corridors form. Uh, tunnels form. And really what's what's going on here? Who wins the game? It's actually not um, necessarily the it's basically the controller of the tunnel wins the game. So now, uh, if I move into this area, then white will win because white will always have a little bit more influence than I would have. So I need to move out of this area. And also I need to ruin this part for them. And now they get the first move along this line. <sighs> oh, I should have. So I'm trying to get be the one who has influence around here, but now they're going to kind of waste Think. All right, no, I need to. I need to waste this. I need to waste this. I need to probably waste this. Yeah. And now we remove all of their options here. Yeah. Okay. And I have my own little area. I'm pretty sure I could win this game. Yeah. Now I have the choice, right? I can go onto any one of these spots. If I choose this area, I have to think about. It. So, it looks like, so I, I control this one, he controls this one, but he controls this one. So, I don't think I have a chance to win if, if I go this direction. If we go to this direction, I think I'm going to win no matter what. Mm-hmm. So, and so it's not about necessarily the person who controls the very last space in a in a trap area but rather who owns the most of that area so right now i've got more influence over this area than white has and therefore at the very last moment i'm going to be the one surrounding it so it's all a game about controlling negative space but you don't have a lot of free options because you always need to be kind of working against the forces of your opponent who also is spending half the time controlling this this pawn this um the direction of play, so to speak. I made this game in 2020, and to be honest, it has constantly surprised me with new ideas and new strategic options. In every game I was learning new something, and nowadays after playing hundreds and hundreds of games of Trike, I feel like I can play this game quite well, but I still I want to continue learning more. And I really hope that other people uh, will understand this feeling uh, after uh, experiencing the game. So a as you play this game, you'll understand more and more uh, what levels of strategy emerge and uh, and reveal themselves to the players. And it, it happened to me. Uh, definitely, I keep learning about this game more and more. Here we have Hex and Taffel by Kevin Kane. So this is a 
basically modern version of Hnefetafel. It's very exciting to see this this classic get uh, ported to this modern board. So it's the, similar to the classic game where we have the asymmetrical setup, the custodian capture, which is basically if you surround the the enemy piece with two on opposite sides, then you kill them. Basically pinch them, yeah, the opponent piece. And the black player uh, has this small number of pieces surrounding the king, and the king, if all the king needs to do is just get to the edges, and then you can uh, you can win. And the white player wins if they capture the king. This game is based on the ancient Viking game, Tafel, or Hnefetafel, or Tablu, uh, depending on which version you're talking about. The pieces in the Canari set are going to look a lot cooler than, than uh, these glyphs that we have here on this digital version on Ludai, which it is still pretty convenient to be able to play this game uh, using the Ludai set against an AI. So I've turned on Ludai and has one second to think and let's see if I can beat it. So how do we play this game? Well we have the black and the white pieces. The black pieces have this king in the middle with uh, three guys and the white pieces have six guys but no king and essentially the uh, the black pieces are trying to get the king to escape to one of these six corners, and the attackers uh, are supposed to prevent that or capture the king. The king can only move one space at a time, so if I click it, you can see it's legal moves. Uh, but the guys, yeah, the minions, can move any of the six directions uh, as far as you can go without running into something. And then how do you capture pieces? Well. If you end up with two of your pieces surrounding, uh, we'll, we'll show you a capture basically. I'll just move my king randomly. Yeah, and I'll move, make a stupid move. He's, he's gonna move over to this location and surround my guy and uh, kill it. Right. Now if I go here, do I also get captured? No. Actually, I'm almost like kind of escaping, Jesus. Oh, you can go there, you can block, you can block the corners yourself. Well, I need to now, if he, if he puts a guy here, then he's going to kill me. Actually, can I do this? Okay. If they can block me, then how the hell am I ever supposed to... How, how am I supposed to do anything, yo? Mm, can I do this? Well, this kills... Oh, this kills. Wow. Okay, so now he's going to block the kill me here. Unless I get out of the way. Pretty cool that I already got one guy, though. That's pretty nice. Can I do something? Uh, I need to prevent him from moving here. Which, I don't think my guy can really get there in time. This guy can't really get there in time. I could kill this guy, but that would I would leave myself open to capture. If I go here, if I doesn't kill him, then I... Let's see, does it kill him? Oh, it does kill him! Oh, wow. Doesn't this also kill him, then? Oh, then I can just win, huh? All right, I win. Amazing. All right, so that was Hexafenafel. And uh, this game is, you know, it's basically a, a modern play on a classic. And so um, this is, uh, you know, it's hard to go wrong with, uh, with, with a game like this. And so basically that's how to, how to play that one. All right, next we have Slide. This is by Mike. I've known him for years now. He's, uh, he invented Tumbleweed, which is probably one of my favorite games of all time. He is a brilliant Polish uh, teacher, mathematician, scout leader, board game designer, and a really awesome guy in general. And this was basically his first major project. I think it really inspired a lot of uh, game designs after this came out. So the, the, it looks like a chessboard, but this is actually set up with pieces already. And the, the, the point of this game is that you, you take turns swapping pieces. So I think white goes first, and I'm gonna just gonna move this white piece over here, and then this is swapping with the black piece. And now black's gonna move, and he's swapped one of his black pieces with a white piece, and now we have these uh, gray little things on top of them. And what this is, is uh, indicators that these pieces can no longer be swapped. So now this piece can already still be swapped if I want. If your piece gets trapped, you know, in the middle, of these grave things, then it's going to be very unlikely that this one swaps. So this one now is kind of stuck forever because there's nothing to, for it to swap with. The whole point of the game is you want to create a big group on the board. The person with the biggest group actually wins. The issue is, of course, every move that you make 
kind of helps you, but it also helps your opponent too, or it can, or it can hurt them, depending on if you play cleverly. So I'm trying to create some, let's say, group here, and right now it looks like my opponent, the computer, has got himself a really big ass group. And I don't know if I can do anything about that, because I am not better than the computer <laughs> at this game. So we're just gonna keep playing, and actually, oh, maybe I screwed up here. Yeah, probably I screwed up here. Because it looks kind of like I might have been able to make a big group had I played a little differently. I just had no idea. Yeah, this is a really tricky game. Super tricky game. And in the end, when all when no more of the moves are left, or if I guess players agree that it's the game's over, right, then black so black won. Because Black had a, a group of 15, I guess this probably is their group, where my biggest group was only 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. They had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 15. And so yeah, and if the groups are tied, then you just look at the second biggest group and so on. So this is Slide. Very um, tricky and strategic abstract board game by Miha Zapawa. The way that Canari has designed this particular physical implementation of the board is really cool because instead of having black and white pieces, you have black pieces on a white background and then just these kind of immobilization tokens that go onto the pieces after they get swapped. So uh, I would say it's a very cool looking design and I am looking forward to playing this in, uh, in IRL, let's say. Make Muster by Dale Walton, and he is actually well known for his game Octiles, which was published many years ago. And your goal is you want to put all of your pieces together into one group, and that can be connected orthogonally or diagonally. Um, but you can also win by splitting the board so that your opponent can no longer unify. This game won some game design contests and has been released on AIAI as well as Ludi, uh, general game players. And this is what the, the small and the large versions. So all of these games come with two versions, basically. So here, the board is empty, starts with the navy player, and take turns adding pieces, but you shouldn't place anything adjacent to your own piece. When you're placing stones, it should uh, be kind of on its own, like it can't place a piece next to another uh, friendly piece. So here's the, the dots are these like list of the legal moves, and I can place a stone, but not next to my own piece. So I'm gonna play some stones. And then once you're no longer able to add something, then you can start moving pieces. Uh, and you wanna move them so that all your pieces are connected, and then you can win the game that way. So you're trying to, uh, you're trying to bring all your pieces together into one big group. And the thing is, as you, um, as you start moving pieces closer together, you also, free up some more space for you to, you know, add more pieces on the board. So it's really a matter of trying to, uh, I guess, lose space in a weird way. So now, okay, because you want to, you want to bring pieces together. You don't, you also don't want to have to add more pieces on there. So let's see, is because if I move this guy, then I'll have to place another piece. And I don't really want to do that, because what I'd really like to do is just win by... Um, oh, but now, shit, right? Now I have to add more pieces on the board, right? I don't want to do that. And now, if I... Are these all connected now? I feel like if I go here, maybe I'll win? Yeah. Yeah, I won. The reason is because all of my pieces are now connected into one big group. Alternatively, if you kind of permanently separate two pieces from the opponent camp, you can also win the game that way. Very tricky uh, strategic game uh, where you're trying to kind of deprive yourself of space so that you can uh, connect your pieces together. So this is the, the Kickstarter. You know, Canary has got a lot of uh, different games that he's been publishing and I really hope that, you know, he can turn this uh, into something that is is uh, also worth worth it for him, because right now it seems like a very good service to the abstract games community. So here we have the Kickstarter. That's everything, and uh, good luck to us. Basically, please check it out. Links in the description, 
and uh, please consider backing the project uh, or uh, please consider just sharing the project so that we get a little bit enough more exposure to to make it past this final hump. Thanks a lot for watching and enjoy playing abstract strategy games.